Welcome to the segment on string sizing. In the last video, we examined inverter specification sheets. In this section, we'll combine photovoltaic module and array data to find the appropriate inverter for the system. Let's begin by looking at an example where we need a 7,400 watt or 7.4 kilowatt system, and then choose a module and an inverter that matches this requirement. We're gonna use this example of an inverter that has a nominal output of 7,200 watts and a maximum usable input of 8,640 watts. So we're gonna start with the assumption that 7,400 watts are required and we're using 300 watt photovoltaic modules. By dividing 7,400 watts by 300 watts per module, we get 24.7 modules. Because we can't have a fractional module, we'll need to round down to 24 modules. So now we know our system will have 24 photovoltaic modules, and these modules are listed as having an open circuit voltage of 38.2 volts and a maximum power voltage of 36 volts. The short circuit current is rated as 8.6 amps, and the maximum power current is rated at 8.3 amps. Now that we have the values for the input of the inverter and the output of the photovoltaic panels, we can determine if the system will work together. First, we'll look at what happens when we wire 24 modules in series. We want to look at the absolute highest voltage the system could produce, which would be at open circuit conditions. The VOC at STC is 38.2 volts, and multiplied by 24 modules gives us a total system voltage of 917 volts. By looking at the spec sheets on the inverter, we see that the maximum input voltage is 600 volts. That means that this system in a series string will not work with this inverter, and it's also an excessively high voltage. To solve this problem, we'll instead try a parallel string to provide two series strings. If we have two series strings, then there are only 12 modules per string, and 12 modules times the 38.2 VOC is 458.4 volts. This is acceptable because it's below the 600 volt maximum. 12 modules times the 36 volt maximum power voltage is 432 volts, which is within the operating range of the inverter as well. The next step is to look at the maximum current that could be produced by the photovoltaic modules, which is the short circuit condition. We're now working under the assumption that we'll have two series strings, and each string has a short circuit current of 8.6 amps. Well, 8.6 amps multiplied by the two strings that we determined previously is 17.2 amps. Looking again at the specification sheet for the inverter, we see the maximum input current for that inverter is 18 amps. So we're below the maximum input current allowed for the inverter. In this case, it appears that the final design would include two strings of 12 300 watt modules. The total system power is still calculated to be 7,200 watts under standard test conditions. This is a little bit lower than the maximum usable input power of the inverter of 8,640 watts. When the PV array output is too far below the maximum usable input power of the inverter, we'd want to consider an inverter that has a slightly lower input requirement in order to maximize the overall system efficiency. Still, it would work in our case here. So we settled on two strings of 12, but is that the only option? Well, let's look at other possibilities. We know that there are 24 modules that are being considered, and that one string of 24 provides a voltage that is too high. 24 modules could be wired in several ways, however, such as one string of 24, two strings of 12, three strings of eight, four strings of six, and so on. So let's see what happens when we try three strings of eight. In this case, each string would have an open circuit voltage of 305.6 volts and 288 volts at maximum power. This fits within the specifications of the inverter, which requires less than 600 volts at VOC and that the operating range be less than 480 volts. Because we're gonna have three strings in parallel, however, we need to add the current for each string. In this case, it would be 8.6 amperes, which is the short circuit current for each string, multiplied by three. This gives us an operating short circuit current of 25.8 amps, which exceeds the maximum input. This means that we cannot have three strings of eight, and our only option in this case is two strings of 12 for this inverter and module pair. Now there are situations where modules can be wired in several different ways to meet the input requirements for both current and voltage of the inverter. 
In general, high voltages pervert over high current, so there's less loss due to resistance, which is also why we wouldn't want to use, say, 12 strings of two, or where, where low voltages with large numbers of parallel strings. So in summary, the process of choosing an inverter begins with first defining the size or the power of the photovoltaic array. You must then choose a module and an inverter and balance the output of the photovoltaic string with the inverter's input requirements. You'll likely need to go through a few iterations to match and maximize the system efficiency. So this concludes the lesson for this module and course. You should now be able to calculate solar gain based on location, use online resources to determine solar gain and calculate losses due to shading, tilt, and azimuth, explain circuitry basics and electrical output for a module and an array, as well as calculate changes based on temperature, apply PV specifications to determine power and energy output, and finally size photovoltaic system strings using module and inverter spec sheets.